this was like, man, 21 years ago. I've been a Muslim now. I'm 1988, okay? Let's forward to 1986. Okay, 1986. I meet some good brothers who were Muslim, right? And I'm 16 years old, living a life, having it good in America. You know how we do. Getting down, you know, smoking, drinking, partying, girls, everything, right? Okay, having a good, right? So, but I meet these cats, and, um, you know what I'm saying? Mashallah, actually, it was their mother, to be honest with you. And what it was about their mother is that she, her husband had died. She, you know, sister named Sinoja, mashallah, very good sister, man. Like, I'd go to their house, right? And they was like, yeah, we will. So I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And so this is when I moved to California, right, for the first time, right? And so we're chilling and whatnot, you know, and, um, you know, and then I'd go to their house at night and chill, right? And But their mother was so strict. Like, after a certain time, I guess now it's like, like a little bit after Maghrib or something like that. Like, at, first of all, they had to do Salat, right? So I'm observing this. Now, this is for two years. These people became really good friends, and I'm observing the Salat. I'm observing the make wudu. And at nighttime, their mother, mashallah, Sanoja, just because she didn't have a husband, did not mean that she, her children were not going to learn the deen, you hear me? And she would sit there and read Quran and Hadith to us. And she would be like, come here, Malcolm. That's my birth name, Malcolm. Malcolm, you need to come over here and sit down. You're going to listen to this. That's how the black community do. All the women, everybody's your mother, and they're going to tell you what to do, and that's just the way it is, okay? So I'm like, okay, Mom, I'm going to do this, okay? So I'm sitting out there listening, right? Yeah, I had the same birthday. That's the reason why I was named Malcolm X. But I'm saying that, I mean Malcolm. But what happened was I'm sitting down there, but I eventually started to dig it. And mashallah, for this woman who said, you know what, because her husband is dead, it's not going to mean that her children were not going to listen to the dean. And as crazy as young teenagers as we was, it was yes, man. And see, so we sat there. Salam, we would sit down there so much to listen too much, we would fall asleep. Mashallah. We would fall asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She would not stop reading. She would not stop teaching. You know what I'm saying? Mashallah. You know, to her three sons and two daughters, who she had to raise by herself, by the way. And... um she would read, 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 and we'd wake up, and she would make them. She would get up, all right, time for, time for um, Salat. At the time, I didn't know what it was, but it was at Fudge. It was Fudge. You know what I'm saying? It got to the point where I said, forget it. I'm not even Muslim, right? But you know what? I wasn't even Muslim, but I started to. I said, you know what? I, I, watched how to, I, I learned how to make wudu. I learned how to make Salat. I just started joining them because, like, you know, well, that's the right thing to do, you know. I'm not going to disrespect you. This is two years before I am Muslim. <laughs> two years before I must give my shahada. You know what I'm saying? And she would always talk to me all the time, all the time. And her sons would talk to me all the time. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm pausing right now because she's really sick, you know, so, um, I'll be back. Back to the, when he started his experience as a Muslim, and, um, subhanAllah, you know, um, this woman, may Allah re reward her, um, imagine, um, imagine you have children and you don't have a husband and God knows the hardship that she was going through and she still was teaching her children Islam this is what I was talking about this is an example of a real Muslim subhanallah Akhi Ulaq Jazakallah khair Akhi Malcolm take the mic and finish your story Wallah everybody is listening to you Akhi Jazakallah khair Hello? Yeah, okay, yeah, mashallah, I'm okay now, alhamdulillah. So nevertheless, okay, and it was the year 19, um, it was actually, um, the next event happened that it was New Year's Eve 1988, okay? And I'm hanging out, I'm with the club and everything, hanging out and everything, and um, I just looked around the club, right? And I said, you know, and something about that night, something about that night, I was like, man, is this what life is about? Because at 18, I'm already doing it. You know what I'm saying? I got this going for that. 
You know what I'm saying? Everything was very material for me at that point. And I'm like, you know, I looked around. And I was like, man, is this what life is about? I looked around, and everything just didn't have its appeal that it used to have. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, same people doing the same thing every night, the same fake, oh, how I'm going to hang out. Yeah, what's up? Same, same fake hug, same fake this, same fake that. People trying to put on a little show. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, we're getting a little old for this. Even at 18, I was like, dude, we're getting a little old for this, man. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm like, you know, this is really ridiculous. That night, just needless to say, I left. I left every, I just left, I left my boys, give them that, whatever. I even left the girl I was with. I was like, dude, because she came out here for a good time. It's New Year's Eve. She does not want to go home and just sit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, dad, you know. And so I just went home. I watched New Year's Eve on television. But that night, I said, you know, I need to find something new, man. I need to find something of substance. My religious background is that I was actually Catholic. I was Catholic because I went to Catholic school. I went to St. Charles Balmail in New York City. And I guess I was Baptist too, because that Baptist was the family church. And in New York, we went. I went to church twice. You know what I'm saying? On Sunday, <laughs> twice. I'm dead serious. I had to go to mass, and I better show my butt out up at Green Pastors Baptist Church, or else I was going to have a problem with my grandmother. She was a very religious person. God bless her. You know what I'm saying? Very, very, very deeply religious person. I mean, so religion that you could even play regular music on Sunday. Like, it was nothing but gospel, period, point blank, and don't You better be on church, and you got to stay to all services. And when you come home, she don't want to hear that heathen music, as they would put. You know, she don't want to hear that heathen music. So God bless her, man. Because at the end, she didn't say Muhammad or Rasulullah, but she said there's only one God. But, um, but nevertheless, I left. Okay, so 1986, I'm searching, right? I'm searching for things, I'm searching for things, I'm searching for things. And um, I looked into everything in that short amount of time between then and May of 1988. I looked into Judaism because I just wasn't, you know, feeling Catholicism. I just wasn't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? So you practiced all? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I practiced both. Exactly. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, right now uh, for the recording, uh, um, Salam Alaikum is asking you, so you practice all? You were looking for the truth, and you were searching out, you know. And the, the, the answer is, yes, I had to. In fact, I studied the Bible pretty depth. I really dug the Bible. It's just certain things that just didn't fit right with me, but I didn't question it. I just went on with it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I went on. So I looked into Buddhism. I looked into um, Judaism. You know what I'm saying? I looked into voodoo. I looked into voodoo. You feel what I'm saying? Just checked it out. But of course, I had my, I had my friends who were Muslim, right? And so, you know, I said, you know what, man? You know, I have a living example right here of, you know, Miss Sinoja. May Allah bless her, man. <sighs> yeah, you know, and her and her sons. And her daughters, you know, and all that. I said, you know, let me let me do this because, mashallah, their life. One thing I noticed that their life, Islam was not just something they professed; it's something that they lived. Didn't say that they were perfect people, and obviously that was not the point to be perfect. As she pointed out to me, in fact, when I was even not even Muslim, I never forget it. Allah does not want perfection from you, but He wants you. He wants your sincerity. Wow. Even 21 years later, I remember what she said. Man. And um, and so, like, so came Ramadan, 1988. So I said, you know what? I need to make a change for my life. Something positive has to happen in my life. Because I just wasn't feeling just the normal things, you know what I'm saying, that was going on. And at the time, you know, life was pretty good for an 18-year-old, you know what I'm saying? Had my girl, you know, I even had a little job. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I moved out when I was 17. Like, I moved out like when I was March. You know what I'm saying? I'm running free. I got my own crib. You know what I'm saying? I'm still getting in clubs. Things are so called good for a Westerner. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, you know, this is, this is whack, man. Something real got to come. So Ramadan 88 comes. You know, I said, you know what? I told my boys, I said, you know, I'm going to fast. They was like, what? 
It was like you bugging. I said, no, I'm going to fast. I know how you do it. <laughs> They're like, what? I said, yeah, I'm going to fast. <laughs> like, huh? I said, I want to do the fast. You know, you do Ramadan, right? Let me get it right. You don't eat in the daytime. In fact, you don't curse. You don't get mad. You, you control all of your desires, right? Right? Okay. So I'm going to do that. But when, 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 when the sun rises, you eat, right? Right? I said, I'm going to do it. Like, bugged out. Like, really? I said, really? I'm going to try it. I just want to see what it feels like. And so I fast every day. You know, up until, and for two weeks, I fast every day. <laughs> every day I fast, but of course I'm reading the Quran, rules, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reading things because it was a little humble little mosque that wasn't even a mosque. It was a little, little house. And it goes to show you, man, sometimes those big mosques is too much, man. Those little humble mosques, man, they treated me like, like a baby. They were, man, brothers from Malaysia, brothers from Palestine, brothers from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, man, really cool. They didn't pressure me or nothing. They didn't, any, any, you know, I just told them what I was up to. I even, before I was Muslim, check this out, uh, Salaam Alaikum, I even, fell, I even slept in the mosque. <laughs> I even slept in the mosque. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just kicking it with my boys, you know, like that, you know. And what I realized, I was being filtered away from all of the dunya, and I didn't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was really attached to the dunya, but slowly I was being filtered away from that. You know, I, who, what 18 year old is going to sleep in the mosque on a Saturday night? All right, think about it. You know what I'm saying? Who don't got your hide, really? That's the time to get with your girl. That's the time to get your smoke. That's the time. You know what? I had, you know what, subhanAllah, so I'm alaykum and everybody in the room, I had even stopped drinking. I had stopped smoking weed before I, all of that, within this um, period of time. You see what I'm saying? I had stopped eating pig. I had stopped. Oh, I'm all like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I said, nah, man, I don't like that. You know, I, and I really didn't even like pigs to begin with, to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? Except the only thing I really liked was bacon, but you know you can get the you can get the turkey bacon. Even got my mom to stop eating. You know, even got my mom to stop even eating pig. <laughs> even got my mom to stop eating pig, right? And so I told my mom in a little bit later. Now check this out. So one day I'm sitting there, and honestly, I'm t everything I'm telling you is true. These miraculous people. A brother came up to me, Palestinian, real built, like he was a bodybuilder with this stove on, I was like, because I was sitting by the mosque, by this little house, on some steps. And wallahi, mashallah, this brother had the most warmest face, I'll never forget, his name was Muhammad. Say, you know, say do it, for, say talk beer for him, because honestly, he died, he died Shaheed in Chechnya. Mashallah, this brother died Shaheed, no, excuse me, he did not die. No, he was made Shaheed in Chechnya. Mashallah. And this, and I was like, he said, he came up to me, hi, how are you doing? I guess he was on Jola or whatever. He was just traveling around giving dawah. So what had happened, he says, hi, how are you doing? My name is Muhammad. I said, oh, hey, how are you doing? Salaam alaikum. Right? He's like, oh, you know Salaam alaikum? I said, yeah, I got Muslim friends. He's like, okay. And so he explains, you know, do you know what this building is? And this is a mosque and everything like that. And we are Muslims. This is 1980. I'm like, okay, 1988, right in the middle of Ramadan. I said, yep. I said, yeah, I know it's a mosque. As a matter of fact, it's Ramadan. And I think you're fasting right now, unless you have an excuse. And he was like, what? <laughs> I'm breaking it down to him. And, you know, it like, and I told him, I'm fasting too. Now, he's bugged out with that. He was straight bugged out. Like, what? He says, let me get this right. You're fasting. You know what Ramadan is. You know what the mosque is. But you're not Muslim. I said, no, nah, man, I'm just, I'm just checking it out. <laughs> right? And he was like, huh? Now, if you really think of it, that's a lot for, I didn't think it was a lot when I was doing that. I didn't think it was a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just checking it, exactly. But see, he said, you know what, but the thing is, though, now this is how he got me in the mosque to give shahada. He says, you know, what I need you to do is come tonight because, hey, if you're fasting, that makes you our guest. And you've got to come here and break fast with us. I said, okay, I'll come in the mosque, you know what I'm saying? I know you guys coming through the back door right there, and the sisters, no, the front door, and the sisters go through the back door. It's like, yeah, I said, yeah okay. I said, you said, yeah. I said, yeah, okay, I'll be there, no problem. Right, and so I come there that night, and the um, brother was asking me, you know, what did I believe this at? And the of course, just to make it short, I was like, yeah, you know, I believe in Layla, Allah, Muhammad. I'm saying, I believe there's no God but one God. And I believe that Muhammad is the messenger, you know, the messenger of this book, because I believe in the, in the Quran and so forth like that. And his brother was like, you know, and he said, he said, you know, many times people are Muslim before, long before 
they give their shahada. They're long Muslim before they give their shahada. So just for all of us, for this brotherhood, would you give your shahada? You know, will you accept the law's way? And it was um, it was May 12th, the 12th, I, I forgot, what, no, it wasn't May 12th. It was the 12th of Ramadan, 1988, that's the night I gave my shahada that night right there, mashallah. And that's how I became Muslim, yes, 1988. You know what I'm saying? And that's my story, you know, for big events. You know, and mashallah for people who are way better than I, you know, mashallah, Sister Sanoja, you know, and the brother, mashallah, Radi Allah, who Muhammad, I forgot his name, big Palestinian dude, you know, but his face was so unintimidating, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, salamu alaykum, Asiya, mashallah. And uh, from that result, alhamdulillah, you know, it's not, it's not been an easy journey in my life, but it's been a guided one. And so, alhamdulillah, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I can say, you know, now 39 going on 40, you know, I can say, mashallah, you know, um, alhamdulillah, I find the truth of Allah every day, you know what I'm saying, living in the deen, inshallah. I go up and down in my deen like everyone else, but alhamdulillah, it's been a guided one. You know, and my mom, my, mashallah, my mother became Muslim uh, three years after me. And mashallah, one of the beautiful things of that is that we didn't have a close relationship at all before. My mom took me through a whole lot of things. You know, running the streets, you know, because my father was a big drug dealer. My mother was a church girl gone bad. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we were not close at all. You know, it wasn't until like, she became Muslim that we actually became close. You know what I'm saying? That's the on that's only time. And that was the last person I thought on earth would ever give a shahada. She didn't want to submit to nothing but the fast day. But mashallah. So is that is that good enough for you? Shalom wa alaykum. Salam wa alaykum. You know what I'm saying? Is that is that is that good enough for you? <laughs> Did I explain it out for you? You know what I'm saying? Khalasna <laughs> akhi. Not yet. Okay. What else do you want to know? Uh, that I have a cousin that I found out was Muslim. He wasn't, we didn't even know we were cousins until later on. You know what I'm saying? Mashallah, my cousin Jihad. You know what I'm saying? My sister Zainab, she's Muslim. You know what I'm saying? People that, you know, Mashallah, you know. And that's just the way it goes, man, you know, in the African American Muslim community, man, you know. So, ah, but big do it for some, man, God dang, she's a great person. I swear she, at least I believe she doesn't deserve what she's gotten, man. But, um, anyway, I'm out, man. Thank you for uh, hearing my story. You guys are cool. No, thank you for telling us the story. My Allah heals our sister, and uh, whatever she's going through, it's for a reason, uh, the The hardship that she's going through, inshallah, Allah knows. Only Allah knows, Akhi Bhak. The, I just want to ask you, Shabbat, when you took your shahada and you told her, for what, what reason, man? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uh, uh, sent trial over somebody, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleaned them, their sin and purified them. And in the day of judgment, he does not ask them no question at all. There are people who will be judged, and we're all going to be judged. So Muslim brothers and sisters, enough for them what they have endured in this life. So their judgment is different from your judgment. So, Akhi, that what she's going through, Wallahi, she's going to be so happy in the day of judgment because a lot of things will be left away from her. She won't be questioned like I am going to be questioned. Allah will tell her enough what you have endured when you were alive. Enough what you have gone through. So if she will have an easy judgment. Because the sins and everything that we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes clean us here and those who are not clean they will have to spend some time in the punishment but Akhi I would like to ask you one question tell me Akhi how was her reaction when you told her you became Muslim oh man too oh man just beyond words, man, you know. I know I knew that you would become Muslim. Yeah, because she had this, like, southern accent. She's from Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? MashaAllah, baby. 
know what I'm saying? Things like that, man, mashallah. Very, very, very. For a while, to be honest with you, when I think back, you know, this is a time when me and my mother were, I didn't even speak to my mother, to be honest with you. You know, that she was there for me when I really needed like a mom, you know what I'm saying, when I really, 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 really needed it. You know what I'm saying, straight up, man. She was very, 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 very happy. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, 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 you know, so, yeah, very, very, I mean, just beyond normal things, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know. And, uh, do I miss Jahalia? <laughs> well, you know what you're not, yeah, not really, you know, not really. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what can I say, man? You know the things that men go through. That was the only big problem, you know. You know what I'm saying. I'm not going to see if we have sisters in the room. But that was about it. Other than that, no, no, no. I didn't miss no drinking, no smoking. I stopped even that before I was even Muslim. or gave Shahada, rather. You know, was it hard for you to keep being a Muslim? It still is. <laughs> what do you mean? It still is a fan, you know. With family, work, yeah. Annalisa Mutazoji asked you. I'm not even married yet. Yeah, I've been, yeah, <laughs> not even married. Inshallah, I'm actually talking to a sister finally. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're moving in that direction. And inshallah, it'll help out, you know. Um, but what it was is that, you know, I really didn't want to get married actually for a while because you're from Morocco, that's right. I wanted to do, like, a lot of our friends, a lot of my friends had went to, um, Morocco, and the city, the name was, and I wanted to join them, but my kidneys failed. SubhanAllah, my kidneys failed. So I couldn't go. Um, they went to, um, what is the city, man? Um, real famous um, for Islamic studies, man. I just had Rabat. Thank you, Shukran Zidin. I wanted to go to Rabat so bad. You know what I'm saying? Because that was real popular in my in my community, in my jama'ah here, is to go study in Morocco. It switched from going to Saudi, but actually going to Rabat. You know what I'm saying? And believe it or not, I know four brothers of mine who came back with Moroccan wives, mashallah. They love the people of Morocco. Morocco, they said, of all the places they've been, was the most kind. You know what I'm saying? Morocco, Moroccans are really awesome. The Moroccans here that are here that are very awesome. You know what I'm saying? So, really, they were very, a um, little bit more sophisticated. Like, I know a brother who studied in Egypt. He said, Egyptians are real harsh. You know what I'm saying? Because the Arabic, it's almost like gargling rocks, you know. They're real hard, you know. But the Moroccans are very smooth and sophisticated. You know what I'm saying? They're Maghribi. So, but no, but um, that's what happened. So, for a long time, I didn't even want to get married. I was trying to study Arabic. You know what I'm saying? Get over it. Because I knew if I went over there, it would be hard to be married. But, mashallah. North Mediterranean, mashallah. So, yeah, the, but, um, mashallah, you know what I'm saying? It's different, yeah, yeah, North Mediterranean, a very different thing, you know. You know, in fact, one brother, he's building a house there now. He's building a house in Morocco. He won't even let his family come here for too long. Like, for six months he goes there, six months he comes here. He doesn't want his family even raised in America, mashallah. But um, I don't want to take up your time. This is not the Black King show, but I thank you for your time and letting me just speak to you guys. You know, how do I feel now? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, You know, and you know what, Salam, Mashallah, you reminded me so. Man, it was right on time what you said, man. Because I'm like, man, because you know, since I've been a Muslim, man, no smoking, no drinking, no this, that, and the third, and my kidney fail. I'm like, hey. What did I do to deserve this? Is this, is this a punishment or something? Like, what's going on? But you're right. You know, rather here. It's the trials of life that Allah promised that we we're going to be tried. You know what I'm saying? And so we go through here that we can we can move on. My lesson in the, the Akira. So thank you so much for reminding me that. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, Jazakallah Mokhez, really for reminding me. And what's going on? Because I have a real soft heart for people who suffer that I believe that, you know, damn, they don't deserve that. What happened, man? Wow. You know what I'm saying? And but we have to remember, you know. Um Allah promised that one, that this world this life will be a trial. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's gonna have it all the way easy. No one has it all the way easy. And I have to re you reminded me of that. You know, we're all gonna be faced with trials. You know, for some it's drugs, for some it's it's 
whatever. You know what I'm saying? For some, it's losing their eyesight. For some, it's losing their legs. To me, I lost my kidneys, but Allah has given me a disease where I could actually get a transplant. And I'm a good candidate for him, subhanAllah. Even, even, even in this trial, Allah is our Rahman. Uh, you know, our Rahim, excuse me. You know? Even in my trial, so I should be grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What is it? Islam.com. At the site, you can visit and learn how about Islam and get live help to embrace Islam. Oh, okay, mashallah. But you know what I'm saying? SubhanAllah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, inshallah, if we have, if we have, if we're the Al Mansur, if we're the victorious ones, you know what I'm saying? That's fine. Let the world laugh at us. Let the world say whatever. But Layla and Allah is the truest statement that anyone else could ever make. You know what I'm saying? No, I didn't. No, I didn't give shahada to my mom. Um, there was another brother named, um, Saidi Lamumba. And he uh, gave shahada to an older guy. And, you know, I never even gave my mom dawah, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I didn't even give my mom dawah, to be honest with you. Wallahi, I didn't just say, you know, I'm going to give my mom dawah. Watch this, da 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 No, I didn't even give my mom dawah. But for some reason, she started, when, you know, when I came to Muslim, she said, yeah, I guess maybe she'd keep me out. But she started hanging around with other sisters that I've, intro uh, women that I introduced her to, older women, so forth. She's going to listen to me. Ah, you know, whatever. We're not even on the best of terms. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. You know, and mashallah, you know, like next thing I know, uh, 88, 89, 90, 91, 91, three years later, three years later, mashallah, she gave her shahada, mashallah, that is so great. So, um, you know, Allah, Allah is al akbar, man, alhamdulillah, you know, even though I'm undeserving of everything that he's given me, I do appreciate alhamdulillah, you know. But, so, so alaikum, the best thing I've heard today is exactly what you told me today. What you said, you know, it's atonement. You know what I'm saying? MashaAllah. You know, so. And because it's a hadith for the Sulaw Sulaw someone has told me that when Allah, He tries people whom He wished to give good to. You know what I'm saying? Because you see all the cats and the most evilest people in the world. They seem to have it easy, yeah? They have it all right now, right? Yeah? But when they have their last breath, that's in this life, and their life meant nothing. It'll be like dust. So I'm off the mic now. I think I've talked way too much. So, alhamdulillah, it's exactly what I can say. No, Akhi. Wallahi, wallahi, you did not talk to me too much. You, it's a, it has been a pleasure to have you in the room. And wallahi, we were following and listening. It's just, uh, uh, it's, it's very important to, to share. Uh, and my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make it easy for you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يا الله يا يا شافي يا علي يا علي يا قدير يا حي يا قيوم يا خالق يا يا الله make it easy for brother إن شاء الله and I'll make it easy for him and his family. Well, Allah سبحانه وتعالى you know you have to understand أخي that the the more the, the hardest the more Allah loves somebody the hardest he will go through the hardest test. You're not the first one, Akhi. You're not the first one or the last one to have the hardship. So, remember this, that yes, it is very painful. It's very, very painful. But it's not what you think it is. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are so many things we don't know, Akhi. We don't know what Allah has preserved for us. We don't know the purpose of this. We don't know. So, remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said one thing, be positive. The shaitan will come to you and will tell you, will try to deceive you. And deception, akhi, if somebody is deceived, he would lose his deen, he would lose his family. Because shaitan, he will promise us poverty, and he will pro promise us uh, uh, sadness, and he will, he will try to, uh, uh, to uh, whisper to us the evil. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember, he has something preserved and prepared for you and for me and for everybody. There's one man, Akhi, he has only one child, Akhi, one child. He used to love Allah, he prayed to Allah from his heart, Akhi. And he was a pious man, he did nothing in his life. You remember what happened, you, remember, you know what happened to this, to, this, uh, to this Muslim brother, Akhi? The angel of death came and took his beloved son, 
in a very short time. Suddenly, his son died in front of him. And you know what happened? You know, he said, Alhamdulillah. He said, Alhamdulillah. He only lived for his son. And he, he sees his son dying. He could have said, why and what happened? He went and he did Turaqa. He said, Alhamdulillah. And you know what happened? The angels came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows that the angel of death already took the soul of the child. For a reason Allah knows. We say he is all-knowing. And Allah said to the angel, did you take the soul of the son of my beloved servant? And the angel of death said, yes, I did. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and what my servant said, and the, and the man said, he thanked you, and he repented to you, subhanAllah. And then he said, Ibnu li abdi qasran fin jannah wa sammuhu qasr alhamd. Built a castle in the highest level of paradise to my servant, and named him, and named the castle, named him the castle of praise. He praised Allah. Imagine, Akhi, this is a Muslim. That's why one of the six pillars of Islam is أن تؤمن بالقضاء خيره وشره To believe in the destiny, the goodness and the badness of the pre-decree because we should believe that Allah knows things before it happens and before it takes place that Allah is already aware of it before it took place. So we as Muslims, we believe in the destiny. When something happens to us, we say Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength. It's not what is going to happen to us. What is it going to happen to us is going to happen to everyone. It's how we're going to face it and how we're going to deal with it. How are we going to deal with a sickness? How are we going to deal with a lost person? How are we going to deal with an unfortunate life, with poverty, with a test, with a disease, anything? How are we going to deal with lavish life, with our beauty or our... It's everything that is given to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question to us. Whether it's good or bad, it's up to us to decide if we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't have to be bad all the time. So we Muslims, we love Allah and we worship Allah in goodness and badness, in prosperity and in, and, 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 and in hardship. This is the face of the real Muslim. That's how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. That's how the Sahaba were. That's how the, you know, a, a, a real believer, you know. Everything comes to them is a goodness from Allah. The calamities fall on their bodies. They say, you know what they say? They say, Alhamdulillah. That's all they say. Alhamdulillah. Qadar Allah. Qadar Allah. This is the destiny of Allah. And they walk in their life. Akhi, take the mic, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. No, wa alaikum salam. I am very sorry. I just got really, I just something I just had to say. That's true. Sometimes we have poor Muslims and defenseless Muslims. And this is something I'm saying to everyone because I just feel like I should say that message. Allah is going to ask us about those people who didn't have. About those Muslims and probably even, even people who are not Muslim. Why? We didn't do it. No. The poor man is a test for the rich man. And see, that's part of the Qadr as well. Part of the Qadr is that Allah is going to test us. And he's testing that poor person with being with poverty, and he's testing us with being greedy. You feel me? He's testing us with how greedy we are, how selfish we are. You feel me? So I say that let's do the Muslim thing, and that we, you know, yeah, we know it's a test because we can't just go by and say, MashaAllah, they're poor and broke. That's just the Qadr of Allah. And we leave them like that. That's just not the way of the Muslim. The Muslim is one who sees something wrong and thus corrects it with his own hand. You know what I'm saying? Corrects it with his own hand. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what we have to do. When we see people who are in poverty, we correct it. You know what I'm saying? When somebody's unjust, we speak against them. No problem. Hey, bring Christian Prince. Christian Prince back. I need to talk to him. You know, I say this is all for Muslims, but that's okay. We can have it. But nevertheless, it's, it's commanded upon us. What is Muslims? We see something wrong to correct it with our hands. That means correct it in physical physical reality. 
corrected. Don't sit by there. Walk by 140 or 42nd Street, see some bum on the corner. We should be active in doing what is righteous. Active in that the Muslim is who? The one whom neighbor, is, neighbor receives from their mouth and their hands. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot. So with Qadr, indeed. Qadr, indeed. True, indeed. But Allah sometimes wants to see how we react. He wants to see how we do in the face of these things. You know what I'm saying? So when we have it good, understand that the rich man is a test for the poor man. Understand what I'm I'm sorry, the poor man is a test for the rich man. The poor man, it doesn't mean rich as like everybody has to be Donald Trump. But it, or you know what I'm saying, or Bill Gates. But for the, the one who has, I'll put it like this, the one who doesn't have is a test for those who do have. And, it, and let us be Muslims, inshallah, and I encourage us all to be genuine, generous. And who we are, you know what I'm saying. So, thank you uh, for listening. And I just was inspired to say that. I, you know what I'm saying. So, I want to I just kind of got inspired to say that because a lot of times, man, we don't really think of it in that respect. That you know what I'm saying. I mean, cut it, cut it, cut it. Okay, we understand. But sometimes Allah wants to see what we do. You know what I'm saying. So, in the Yom Kiyama, we can say, Yeah, Allah, we tried our best to do this. We tried our best. You know what I'm saying. I didn't leave. You know what I'm saying? No one who ever asked, I didn't leave them with anything. Inshallah, may Allah help me keep that keep that promise. If someone ever asks me of something, that they won't leave empty. You feel what I'm saying? They will not leave with nothing if I have, inshallah. So I'm off the mic. As-salamu alaykum.